Hey guys, Chris Neil from Recycler. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another unboxing. I'm currently in the shop. Christine's just ducked out on a, on a bit of an errand. We're going to close up soon. It's Monday and it's pretty quiet. But we're going to do an unboxing of some stuff I found just here that hasn't been opened for at least seven years. I, well, I purchased it seven years ago. I know it's household stuff. I think there's some pretty cool bits in here. Let's have a look and see what's in there and what we think it's worth. Okay, this box came from in the storeroom out here. It actually wasn't one that I'd moved from next door from my old shop. And I can tell by the code that it was purchased in 2015. And I remember it was in a, a nearby town. And I do remember uh, dealing with a lady that was moving into care, aged care. And she was cleaning out her cupboards. And we threw a lot of stuff in boxes. And uh, a lot of it got sorted. This didn't. And I don't know if it's good stuff that I saved or if it's just a box I didn't get to. But... I have noticed the corner of the box is torn. I couldn't get it out of the sh on the shelf one-handed. I, I did I kind of drag it open, pulled a few heavy things out the top, and Christine carried it through for me. Let's have a look what's inside. Uh, and I like this household stuff. It's really vintage, and it's good fun doing uh, estate houses uh, from older people that kept a lot of stuff that dates back. Some of it was wedding gifts from the 60s and well right on top we have an old camera. So let's go through it. We'll work out some prices later but we'll just have a bit of a fossic. Now some of the stuff I have did notice has actually got price tags on it. So way back 15, well 7 years ago, 8 years ago maybe, whenever I bought it, I must have started pricing some things I do not remember. So let's go through, we'll see what value we get out of here, see if there's any cool stuff for some crystal there. Uh, and the cameras are always cool and we'll unpack it and work out some prices and just see, see how much value was sitting in this box for seven years in a shelf in my storeroom so we'll start with this ca this camera it's a box brownie there's lots of different types of these uh, it's great to have the original box you rarely see the original box and hopefully that means the camera's in pretty good condition so they're not rare but they're um you know quite a nice collectible I've seen people make lamps out of them. Come on, get out of the box. Uh, and, oh look, we've got the book too. That's pretty nice. And this one does look in good condition. Kind of a bit of an art deco, oops, upside, upside down. Bit of an art deco look to it. Bit of chrome, bit of nice artwork on the face there. It's not scratched up, it's not rusty. That's in great condition. It probably would still work. I don't know if you can get film for these. But I can remember using one of these as a kid. And it's really weird that you don't hold it up to your face like you do with a more modern camera. You hold it down, and I'll see if I can get you an image. You hold it down near your waist and look through the viewfinder. And is that going to focus? Not really. But that's where you get your image of what you're taking a photograph of. And you have a shutter on the side. I think, oh, maybe that's not it. I forget exactly how to use it now. But they are pretty simple, and that's in really good condition. I'd have to check eBay to see what they're going for. I know some of them do bring better, some of the varieties bring better money than others. I would guess that that's probably a $40 camera, given that it's got its box and its book. So I will fine-tune these prices. I'll make a bit of a list at the end, but I'm guessing 40 on that one now. So what else is in here? Well, this is unusual. This looks like a one of the giveaways from a service station. Now, Amoco, I think, is an American oil company. And it looks like a little model glider. So perhaps when Dad filled up with fuel in the 60s or 70s, I reckon this would be around that era. Um, the kids could get little gliders, promotional things that they just put together and throw around the backyard until the dog chews them up. Uh, given that's in the original packet, there wouldn't be too many of those survive, I wouldn't think. I will have to try and research that, but my gut feel is I reckon that's a $30 item. Uh, we have some kitchen stuff. Hang on, what's this? This is a dry cleaning spirit. Original box is a bit tatty. But I like finding this sort of stuff. And the bottle's here. It should have a good label on it. Sorry, it's a bit hard to do this one-handed. There we go. Uh, Merlex Super Dry Cleaning Spirit. It looks to be two-thirds, three-quarters full. Uh, plastic top, I would say 1960s. It's Australian. I'm not sure if the company is Australian, but it says it's Sydney, Australia. Um, so 
definitely probably 60s. It will be, it's in fluid ounces, so it's um, pre the metric system. Nice label. The bottle itself is nothing really flash. If that bottle turned up empty with no label, it would pretty much be just going in the recycle bin. There's not much value in those generic chemical bottles. But with the label, especially being Australian, uh, assuming it's Australian company, I reckon that's, uh, let's probably put $10 on that with the box. Nice little saleable piece for someone that likes setting up displays of vintage household stuff. This is pretty cool, a handy slicer. And I do like that it's got the cover with it. That really adds to the value. Made in Japan, that would be 60s again, I would say. Uh, and look, we had priced it at $10. And I would still stick with that price. I think if it didn't have the cover, and let's slide it out. I think it's just a series of... Oh, it shows you in the picture. Oh, there we go, a series of blades. Uh, but yeah, if it didn't have the protective, the advertising cover on it, uh, it would probably be 2 to $3, maybe 5 But it would certainly get 10 with the um, packaging. In fact, that's really that's really the selling point. How cool are the graphics there? Uh, next item, let's look at this one. It looks like it's a brush set. Again, we had priced it at ten dollars, and there we go. It's pretty good. I think again, I would stick with that price. We have a clothes brush. These are normally clothes brushes or a hat brush, just for brushing fluff off things. They're not a hair brush at all. Uh, they're in pretty good condition. It's almost that faux tortoise shell look. It'll be a, a hard plastic, and there's the comb that goes with it. Yep, unused, possibly a, a wedding gift or a birthday gift from long ago. Sometimes they gave these, gave things like this away as sporting trophies, which is quite bizarre. When I cleaned up my grandfather's place, that box is in great nick too. Cleaned up my grandfather's place and the top cupboards in the kitchen were full of all these old trophies from when he was bowling and golfing. And a lot of them were just household things like stuff for the kitchen and, and plates and trays. This one's would be Japanese again. It's 1960s again, I would say. Does it say anything on the lid? No, maybe that's the base. Oh no, that would be the lid. Uh, what we have is a, a little cruet set. So that would be a mustard pot with the spoon. A nice floral design on it. It it is Japanese, even though it, show, it doesn't show anything on the base. Uh, quite often they did that. They didn't always say made in Japan on the base. Uh, so salt and pepper with a timber bottom. Plastic bungs there rather than cork. So maybe maybe late 60s into the early 70s. A little spoon for the mustard pot. Pretty cool. Uh, I would probably go $10 on that again. Did we have a price on the lid? No, we didn't. But I reckon that's a $10 item again. Uh, it really fits under the retro umbrella and it's pretty popular stuff, the retro stuff. Uh, this is a crib board. Cribbage is a game where you have, I've never played it, but you have a few pins and you, I presume somehow you produce, um, progress your pins around the board to beat your opponent or something like that. I'm sure some of you have played crib. That looks like a homemade one just out of a piece of acrylic. So maybe just $5. I don't see a lot of value in that. Might struggle to make 5 uh, Whimsies are a Wade, uh, they're a, a little China animals made by Wade in England. I'm not sure if they're all in this box. The box is cool. I don't know if any are in this box. Oh, here we go. That's very nice, having the original box. So as you can see, they're little porcelain animals. Oh, someone's labelled that a pony, just in case we weren't sure. I wonder, well, what is a stoat? I've never heard of a stoat. Looks like some sort of wild pig. Or, um, hmm, don't know. Uh, and a retriever. I wonder if they've written dog on the bottom of that. Now, I don't think these ones actually have Wade stamped on them. So, if they didn't have the box, you would not know if they're a modern Chinese ornament or made in Japan or, indeed, uh, Wade ones made in England. So, that's pretty cool having the original box. I wonder if the other two are in the in the big box here somewhere. We will check that out. I don't know what they're worth. Really, would I would only guess at about 10 bucks again for that. Maybe a bit more because of the original box. We'll check that out before we finish up. Uh, some more kitchenware here. And again, this is something that is just so typical of value. This is probably virtually a nothing item. A piece of plastic. 
uh, if it didn't have the, back, the advertising cardboard with it. It says a Dolson product, and it's clearly a slicer and server, as the instructions say. But that piece of plastic would not really interest anyone. But for anyone that collects vintage advertising, how cool is that? With that little advertising display piece. Preston, Victoria, so it's a suburb of Melbourne, made locally. Made from odourless and tasteless durable plastic will not contaminate foods. Fantastic. Another Dawson time saver. So I've got, we've got $10 in that again. I'd certainly stand by that value. Uh, and all the value there is in the advertising. What's down the bottom here? This is a weird looking creature. In fact, this doesn't look that old. Certainly by the tag. Or is that tag perhaps doesn't belong to it. Uh, I think that's very modern. I don't know how that got in the box. But then again, when we clean out cupboards from deceased estates, there's quite often things that they've acquired just the week before and put in the cupboard. I don't see any real value in that. I would put that on the dollar trolley and some someone might grab it just for interest's sake. We have here a, looks like a powder, dressing table powder container. Yep, certainly would be. Uh, just some residue left. There's no powder puff applicator thing. Uh, it was Looks like it was sold by Meyer, a big chain store. Oops. I wouldn't want to have that powder in a little plastic bag in my car. It would look a bit sus if I was pulled over by the police. But clearly that's just a makeup. Uh, and I don't think the cardboard box has a lot of value. Probably would be 60s again. Uh, maybe $5. We'll see how we go on some of that stuff. Okay, we have a tobacco tin. Quite rusty, which is a bit of a shame. Although Craven A were very popular and there's a lot of tins around. We've got $10 on that. And that's probably reasonable. I wonder if the rusty bit... I think the rust might come off a little bit. Perhaps with a citric acid treatment. Or though I'm not going to go to the trouble for a tin that's not worth a great deal. Um, we might just kind of give it a really light wash to get the loose flaky stuff off. So there's nothing in it. It feels totally empty. So $10. We should get that for it, I think, if we can clean that rust up a little bit. And maybe just smear a little bit of... Um, light oil over it or even beeswax is probably a better idea just to take away the harshness of the rust and it'll stop it rusting any further all right we're getting through the box i'll try not to have this video drag out too long although most of you seem to think you quite enjoyed the uh, unboxing with all the spanners and that went for quite a while here we have a little uh, wallet for cards perhaps hunters run genuine leather Quite in quite good condition. Nice, supple, soft leather. Beautiful to feel. Hunter's Run. Never heard of it. I don't think it's going to be worth a great deal, but it's a pretty cool little um, wallet, I guess you would call it. Not sure. We might just put 3 or $4 on that. Uh, what have we here? Something looks Japanese again. Oh, no. We've got Vancouver, Canada. It's a promotional thing. Horseshoe Bay. Thermometer made in the USA. There we go. So it's Canadian tourist piece, uh, just designed obviously to hang on the wall. Nice scene of Horseshoe Bay uh, with a bonus thermometer which is in Fahrenheit and Celsius. And interesting, the totem pole type thing. I wouldn't have thought that's Canadian, but perhaps it is. It looks more New Zealand to me, but then again, I don't know much about Can Canada. So that's a nice little piece. Anyone with uh, connections to Canada would probably be interested, particularly if they found it in the little junk shop in Australia. I think we'd go $15 on that one. Price it up a bit. It's interesting with some pricing on some of those things. You could have it at a dollar, and it's probably going to sit there still until the right Canadian-orientated person buys it. So sometimes the price isn't the deciding factor. It's whether someone wants it or not. Uh, what have we got in here? It looks like some gloves. There's a pair of black dress gloves, I guess they'd be. Not sure where they're made. We usually put gloves out in the shop at $5 a pair and let the customers decide what they're worth. Can't see any tags in there. I'll check with Christine on those, but I'd say about $5. A butterscotch tin looks in great condition. And I think there's something in this. And I've just popped it open, but I haven't swung the lid up yet, so I don't know either. It's made in Claremont. Tasmania, so it's an Australian tin. That's a beautiful tin. I would think $15 on that tin on its own. Let's see what's in it. 
and oh look at this Pascal we have the original treats what were they lollies of some sort butterscotch we have a few original oh no we don't they're peak Wrigley's PK chewing gum I mean they're pretty cool in their own right but fancy putting them peppermint flavor fancy putting them in a butterscotch tin so there's four pieces of chewing gum in each little packet they are so cool I like them so the Pascal's wrapper is original to the butterscotch and then we have Wrigley's chewing gum how about that so I would think I you know I would put these in a little container and put five dollars each on them as little chewing gum samples uh, no one's going to eat them they're more for a nice vintage display so that would make that five ten fifteen twenty twenty five thirty dollars in chewing gum and at least ten probably fifteen dollars in the tin it's pre-metric so it's in it's got to be in the 60s perhaps very early 70s great condition beautiful tin i'd probably maybe even up that to 20 it's a really nice australian tin nice find there uh this looks like a timber book um i'm guessing it may be a jewelry box or something does it even open maybe it's just hang on i'll put the phone down and see if anything opens no i thought it might have had a drawer or something in it but oh, i think it's just a solid lump of wood there's nothing shaking inside so i maybe it's a bookend although it wouldn't really hold books very well not sure what that's for so anyway maybe it's just an ornamental book we'll probably put five dollars just because it's unusual and quirky okay getting further into this box now we've got a bit of china as well whoops we better not break it what is this oh we've put a tag on it what's the tag say Vintage wool holder and gauge. Well, there you go. Ah, oh, yes. A knitting gauge. I probably would have guessed at that. It says needle gauge on it, so I wouldn't have had to guess very hard. So that's for gauging the size of your knitting needles. And it's like a um, a string dispenser for wool. So, yeah, you'd put your ball of wool in there and it would feed out the one hole. Perhaps hang it somewhere while you're knitting and then it doesn't get tangled and the cat can't run away with your ball of wool. Pretty cool. Uh vinyl strap probably wouldn't date it much earlier than the 60s i don't think the plastic is bakelite i think it's just a hard plastic so yeah i'd say 1960s and that would have a collectible value and what was the price 15 i think that's fair enough getting further into this box now we better get some of this china and glass off before it crashes down now we have some salt and peppers here crystal salt and peppers still with the salt and pepper inside so a lot of these salt and peppers, they're um, they're usually a bit damaged around the tops. These ones look okay. The tops of these always crack. But now that looks pretty good. They've got a very th coarse thread on them. So it doesn't need much of a chip to the thread for them to basically not attach properly. And I don't know if you've ever tried to put a little bit of salt on your meal and the whole top comes off and you end up pouring... Um, you know a couple of kilograms of salt on you well they don't call, hold that much but you know what I mean it was a trick when I went to college that someone would um, loosen the top of the pepper and then you'd shake a bit on your meal and pretty awful thing to do but you know that's what you did at college they're quite nice I don't think I'd even, even clean them up you know I think I'd leave them with the original salt and pepper in them uh, easily ten dollars a set there nice little set now we have a few others let's get on to those while we're going with the condiments that's a nice amber glass depression era probably 30s or 40s i think these ones are probably a bit later that one certainly looks a bit art deco so an earlier piece and the black lid is actually glass it's not plastic nice little piece but it, unfortunately i don't think we have the salt shaker with that one or do we no that's a different that's a pepper shaker with a different lid the green glass lid wouldn't be original to that uh oh hang on here we go maybe it is because here's the salt with a green glass lid a bit unusual but they certainly kind of go i wonder if that green glass is actually uranium which glows under black light let's try that i have a black light here and oh look at that it does glow so 
a lot of the green glass you get from the Depression era from 1930s, it, you can get a little bit later. It does actually glow under a UV light and it's quite collectible. It's called uranium glass because I believe there was traces of uranium added to the glass mix and the UV light actually causes it to glow. So yeah, quite collectible little salt and peppers there that would go in someone's uranium glass collection. Uh, so that's up the price a little bit. I reckon would put $20 on those. Very nice little set there. Uh, do we have any more salt and peppers? We have a cruet set here, a crystal cruet set, which has a little crystal tray and the pepper, the salt's missing its lid and that would be just a little mustard pot or perhaps that's probably just a toothpick stand I'm not sure if there was a lid I would have called it a mustard pot they may be in the box we'll have a bit of a fossic before we work out a price for those oh look at that just over here we do have the lid and a little spot for a spoon so definitely a mustard pot salt pepper and mustard they sometimes had little glass spoons the one you saw earlier had plastic if we could find another top I would probably put around about $15 to $20 on that one. Particularly if we had a little spoon or even a little silver spoon or silver plate spoon, that would make it up to $20. Nice little set. Hopefully the top turns up for the salt. Uh, okay, we're getting through now. This whoops, this box lot is going to last us quite a while. I hope you don't get sick of these long videos. Uh, we have a tea tin, 125 grams, so much more modern. Narada Colonial Brew. I would think I would probably only put $5 on that. Don't know when it would date to, but certainly much more modern than the rest of this stuff. Uh, we have a timber... Oh, a little timber desk calendar. That's pretty cool. It did have a thermometer, and it's missing. Obviously broke, broken or fallen out. It was a Sydney um, souvenir item, and I don't know if all the date cards are there. So given that the thermometer's broken, I think we'd probably just put five on that. Nice piece of timber, all the same. And that would date to, oh, it's mulga wood, I think. Yep, that would date to, I oh, reckon that would date to the 50s Sydney souvenir. We have a little bit of china here. Let's see if we can sort some of that out. A couple of little pin dishes. These will be English. A nice kind of 30s or 40s era pattern. Uh, made in England for Web Salon Maya Emporium Melbourne. That's interesting. It has a an Australian connection. That one's the same. Uh, but I think it's Grindley is the English China brand. Um, these sort of things are pretty hard to sell. It's interesting having the Australian connection. We might try $5 each on those. They're nice and colourful. If they didn't have that Australian Maya connection, I think I'd go $5 the pair. This looks like Japanese. It's kind of a luster wear. Yes, it'll be Japanese. Even with the teacup, and I don't think there's any teacups in here. Even with the teacup, that would struggle to get $5. So we'll probably put that on the free trolley. And there's another saucer here, an orphan saucer. Victoria, China, Czechoslovakia. Again, probably only 1950s or 60s era. And even if we had the teacup, it wouldn't be worth a great deal. Uh, oh, there's one of my business cards. Look at that. Actually, that was a, a poor printing. The N of mention is at the other end. Uh, oh, there we go. We used it as a price tag. 60s salt, pepper, mustard crew. It's at $10. Yeah, well, if we could find the other lid for the salt, I think we'd go higher than 10 on that. Uh, this is quite a modern little trinket dish. Uh, it's quite heavy, but I think these are probably made in China. Trinkets, does it open at all? It must open somehow. Oh, there we go. It just lifts up. Yeah, so oh, it's just got magnetic catches on it. And gift, yeah, craft, crafted in China. Yeah, they're just a little uh, giftware shop item. They probably sold them 5 or $10. Um, it's got a little bit of corrosion on there. Might be just a couple of bucks for that one. Maybe five. People do collect butterflies. I have a little dish here. And it looks like there was a brooch in it. I don't know if it went. I don't think it went with it. I think it was just stored there. So the dish itself looks Japanese um, a little trinket dish oh yeah I've had these ones before I don't think they're worth a great deal even though they say 24 karat gold trim uh, 
pretty hard to sell that sort of stuff. Probably just, we might try $5 on it. And the brooch itself uh, doesn't look anything special. The first thing I do with jewellery is to try a magnet on them. And I don't have a neodymium magnet handy. I like to use the powerful hard drive magnets for this. This one's just a microwave magnet. But you can see there that there isn't a magnetic attraction. And you just simply do not get that on any quality piece of jewellery. So that's just a, a piece of costume jewellery. It's quite a pretty little bow brooch. It might get $5. Uh, righto, let's get into the rest of this. We have something in a box. What's in the box? It's quite an old box. And, oh, okay. These are um, vicious looking things. They're just hair clips. They're actually aluminium with a spring. And they're just an old style hair clip. Some of them are steel, some are aluminium. Yeah, vintage hair clips. We would put $5 on the lot there. I don't know that anyone actually would use them. But they're, you know, they're curios. And people buy curios. They're probably English made. Doesn't say. But anyway, a bit rusty that one. Who wants a rusty piece of metal in your hair? <laughs> Alright, $5 for the box lot of hair clips. Now this wheelbarrow is cute. A little mulga wood wheelbarrow. It's probably an ashtray. Nicely stamped, Australian made mulga wood. Flathead screw is always good to see. It, it dates it much earlier. This would probably be 1950s. Very well constructed. And if we had even a dish or something that went in there... Maybe one of these. No, a bit big. It would have been a little ashtray, probably a pressed metal one. It might even be in the box. We'll keep looking. Uh, the price will depend on whether we find it or not. Uh, right, what's this? These look like... Well, it almost looks like part of a bellows. Maybe they're just trivets. We had tagged this. Kitchen wall hanging set of three. I would say they're probably, maybe you could hang them on the wall, but I would say they're probably trivets for putting hot saucepans and things on your bench. Uh, probably hand painted. Quite pretty. Uh, timber with a little bit of um, braiding around it. Staple across the back there. Probably 60s, early 70s. May have even been homemade. Probably just put, oh, we had 10 on them. I think 10's a little ambitious for that. Um, we might try 10. We can always drop the price. We have an elastoplast bandage tin. These are extremely common. We get a lot of these in house cleanups, usually in old kitchen cupboards. Oh, there is, oh, there's probably bandages in this. It feels like there is. Yeah, there is too. Look at that. Probably not the original bandages, but it might have been used in a first aid kit. We'll leave them in there. And that will be a, an earlier one in, you know, it's in widths or in inches, three inch bandage. TJ Smith and Nephew Hull, so English. Interesting to see a name and nephew. You normally see and son. Uh, I think we'd probably go for 10 on that, given that it's got some bandages in it. We have some vintage, what are these, just bottles? A little stout bottle, but it's plastic and it's hollow. Not sure what they went with. This one's more solid. Risha's Dinner Ale. That's quite heavy. Is that a bottle opener? Maybe that goes in the other one. We'll check them out a little bit more. There might be more to that. Does that hide in there? Don't know. Unusual. We'll work on those in a minute. Uh, this looks like... Almost looks like a, a, a mobile, like a hanging thing. Oh, I don't know what these are. We'll check them out later too. That piece was just rubbish. We have a lid off something very rather rusty and dirty it looks like it was a magnet I don't think there's any value there oh that went with this there we go reminds me of those Russian doll things um, and I gather this went with it but it's quite badly corroded uh, I think we might just drop this straight in the in the scrap metal bin I can't see oh well, we might put that on the dollar trolley or the free trolley but I don't think this part needs to go with it. They can go in the scrap metal. Uh, we have a little cigar tin here. Cigar tins don't seem to be anywhere near as collectible as tobacco and cigarette tins. Oh, look at that. 
there's still a rolly in here. Someone's rolled a cigarette. I'm assuming it's just normal tobacco. Doesn't have any strange smells to it. Um, we might just tip that in the bin. I don't think that's going to add any value to it. Probably a $5 cigar tin. There you go. You never know what you're going to find in tins. Uh, a little bit more timber work. This is a really well-crafted shoe. Beautiful, beautiful timber. It's, all, it's a bit of a fiddleback type timber. Maybe it's a, um, a walnut or something. Now, I'm not sure what use it has other than an ornament. Doesn't look like anything necessarily sat in the top. Really nice. I'd, I would put $10 on that just as a really nice shoe. Wooden shoe ornament. Probably 1950s again. Uh, getting towards the end of the box now, we have an old gold chocolates. McRobertson's was a Melbourne company. Half pound net, so that will be in the 60s. Only $5, I would suggest. Oh, only three on the tag. That's probably more realistic. Pretty hard to sell these chocolate boxes. I've had a few before. Uh, another box here, but this one's quite heavy. So what's it got in it? I won't look at the tag just yet. Oh, it's a set of knives. All right, so they're not bone-handled knives, unfortunately, because they're worth pretty good money. These are Sheffield, so they're English. Got a bit of a shield on the handle. The handle looks like it's some sort of uh, cast aluminium. They're quite heavy. The blades look great. Uh, I think I'd go $10 on those with the box. What did the tag say? 20 Yeah, I don't think I'd go quite that high. So if they were bone-handled knives, they would probably get 40 But we'll go 20 We'll go 10 on those. Okay, let's get through the rest of it. I've worked out what these are. They've got, as you can see there, they're actually fold-out decorations, like Christmas decorations. And they're just folded up and clipped, and the old paper clips are very rusty. But basically they just hold them flat, and then when you take the paper clip off, they open out. These probably haven't been opened out for 30 or 40 years or more, probably, probably 50 or 60. How's that? Fold-out decorations, including a little... What's that? A swan? Maybe a swan? And it folds right around. And when you fold it right around, you would just put the clip uh, to hold the two ends together. And you've got a swan decoration. Or a dodo, or whatever you think it looks like. How cool. Um, I don't think they're enormous value, particularly because the clips are very rusty. Um, I'm just going to put $5 a lot. Someone will see the merit in in some vintage decorations pretty cool we'll fold that one back up again before it gets damaged uh, now we have a tin in the corner here which super DDT dusting powder that stuff is supposed to be very nasty I'm going to be extremely careful with that tin looks like it's even got some powder around the top of it uh, okay as much as it's a cool tin, I think I'm going to bag that up and um, I don't want to put it in the shop. And that's the trouble with vintage stuff. You sometimes do find some nasty things. So I can probably... Yeah, I think I'll just bag that up and... Yeah, don't know. I'll have to work out what to do with that, but it's not going in the shop. I better just wash my hands in a tick. In fact, I'll go and do that now. Okay, we're all decontaminated. Let's have a look at the last few things here. We have a mirror and magnifying mirror looks like it's part of a, uh, a makeup set perhaps and it's quite decorative in fact it looks like it's uh, one of those compacts for putting on makeup for the ladies back in earlier times uh, but it's obviously just a traveling mirror oh look at that pretty good condition too that's great. So one side's a magnifying one and one side's a plain mirror. Excellent condition with the original box. Uh, I'm guessing maybe 1970s, maybe uh, Japanese made. It's a needlepoint look. Made in Japan. Yep, there we go. Um, that will sell quite well. I think we'll get 10 on that. And we have a nice looking tin here and there's something in it. Oh, before we go any further, I know where this goes. That suits our wheelbarrow. Beautiful. Well, it seems to. Not sure if it... No, it's not the original one, but that will do. You can see it doesn't quite go around wide enough, but that's the sort of thing it would have had. 
Uh, we'll put that with it, and I think that barrow will probably sell at $10. Uh, oh, something else we're looking for. There's a little mustard spoon. So that one can go in this set. We didn't find the other cap, unfortunately. Now that mustard spoon's just a plastic one. It's probably, oh yeah, that, that works all right. So yeah, I might have to, I've got a box of spare caps somewhere. Did we put a value on that? Or well, this had 10. I think we we're going to go a bit higher if we had it complete. Let's just go 10 on that because it's incomplete. Because anyone that's been following my channel knows that a lot of my stuff's in storage and I'm not going to find it for many years. Nice old nugget boot polishing tin here. Beautiful colours. That's a great tin. So I think the top will clean off a lot better too. It just feels a bit greasy. Uh, I reckon that's a $20 tin. Let's see what's in it. Oh, it's the actual nugget kit. We'll leave that with it then. There's some a polishing pad, a brush, and the good old Kiwi boot polish, which these, when they're in, in imperial sizes, what size is this? Sorry about the reflections. So I'd probably nearly get 10 for that tin. I might put that tin out separately and put 10 on that. Looks like a, a vintage one. Even though you can get them in grams, I think this is an older one. Uh, yes, one and a half ounces. We'll get 10 for that tin alone and then we'll sell the other one with the pad and the brush for 20. So that's great. Some good value there. Uh, the last thing in the box, other than this little knife, which is not going to be much value on its own, that can probably just go on the free trolley, is a travel clock. I do like these little clocks. Let's see if it's a goer. Open it up first. It's a nice vintage one. It would be 50s, I'd say. Maybe a little bit later, maybe 60s. I can't quite read the brand there. Can we read it through the phone? Made in Germany, I think that says. Nice little clock. Let's see if it runs. Well, I wound it up. It appears to be ticking. I'll give it a bit of a test. It's obviously been well used. Look how much wear there is. Hang on, we'll spin this around. Look how much wear there is to the, the case around the winder. So it's obviously been well used. And is it still ticking? No, I think it's stopped. All right, might be a quick restoration project for me on that one. But yeah, nice little clock. Now in going condition, I'd get 20 to $25 for that. Maybe even a little bit more. Cosmetically, it looks pretty good. Hinges aren't broken. Needs a little bit of a clean up. So... I'll do a bit of a check on that, and if it is going to run, we'll get probably about 25 for that. That's it. Box is empty. All right, just before we get to the price list, we didn't find any more whimsy creatures, so that's a bit of a shame, but still, that pack, I'll have to do a bit of checking, but that little set's quite nice. The clock doesn't run. It stopped almost instantly after I wound it, so uh, I'd probably put $10 on it as it is, but I might take it home and throw it into my workshop for a future project. But we'll value it at 10. And these two, oh, before we get to these two, this one, we only found the one, unfortunately, because it's a really nice piece. I'd put five on that on its own. It's a shame we didn't have the salt to go with it. Uh, and these little bottles, well, this one's just a hollow plastic one. Don't think there's much value there at all. This one's quite heavy and it's metallic. And it's got a, a label which says Sydney, Australia on it. And I couldn't work out what it was for a start until I pushed the top down and it releases a bottle opener. How cool is that? So it's a little bottle opener hidden in a bottle and just perhaps we have to push the top to get it to go back in. Just perhaps it goes with a few others so that it's well disguised and hidden. I don't think this has any value but I think that's at least a $10 bottle opener. Very cool. Like that. So there we go. That's the end of our valuations. I will fine tune them when I do the list and I'll let you know if there's been any uh, a little bit of research on, research on some of them that might indeed allow a little bit more value on some. But I think I'm pretty spot on on all those figures and we'll see what it adds up to. One box of vintage household stuff that's been shoved away for nearly, nearly eight years. How much value was sitting on the shelf? Okay guys, we're now actually home and it's time to go through some figures. I've just been having a coffee and I did clean this Craven A tin up a little bit just with a very light scourer and some soapy, warm soapy water. And as you can see, a lot of what was there came off and it took the paint off as well because it was just 
loose flaky stuff not much we can do about that i did smear some beeswax over it so it's still presentable lucky it wasn't a rare tin but you know it is what it is i still still think we'll get ten dollars for that one right let's move on to our figures uh i'll scroll through them as quickly as i can i did up the box brownie a little bit after checking online there's a lot for sale but i think because this one's got the book and the box it adds a bit uh i did not find any of those Am amoco gliders but there was a lot of other promotional stuff and you know it had a bit of a following but not enormously uh, high amounts uh everything else was pretty well as suggested uh, the Whimsies, I found a few of those complete sets. Apparently they date to the 50s and uh, even complete in really good condition with the box and everything. A few sellers were asking $90 or $100, no sales at all. Lots of individual ones were selling. Well, a lots were listed, not many sold. I think 15 is a fair price there. Uh, we just tweaked a few little prices here and there, but basically as I went through... Uh, and what else have we got here? The Yep, that's pretty well as expected. So 286 for that page. But we had oh, we had two pages. And let's go straight to the total. $452 worth of stock in one box. And as I said, I think my prices are very reasonable. I've been selling this stuff for 20 years. Uh, and I'm sure most of it will sell fairly quickly. Uh, everything here was pretty well as explained. Uh, I did up that butterfly trinket box to $5. Um, yep, don't see anything there that I hadn't mentioned or hadn't discussed. Uh, all the prices, yep, there we go. The travel clock, I just put 10 on it, but I am going to try and fix that one. I'll do a little video on that one perhaps too. So how's that? $452 for one box of vintage uh, household stuff. And that type of household stuff is exactly what usually gets thrown in the bin when people clean up a deceased estate or someone's moving and they just, they couldn't be bothered with little things like that. Uh, I know it's difficult for people that don't have a shop to sell, but even a box of vintage kitchenalia, throw it on Facebook Marketplace, there's going to be collectors for it. It's certainly much better than throwing it into the bin. Uh, not much there could have been recycled, maybe some cardboard bits, maybe some of the bottles, but... As you saw, there's some really good value in there as collectibles and just people that like to buy vintage stuff. It's really popular these days, so don't tip it in the bin without at least investigating. Hope you enjoyed that, guys. Let me know if you like these um, unboxing videos. As most of you know, I've got a shed full of boxes and all sorts of stuff's in there. So I'll do some more. Also, the longer video format you seem to be enjoying, so I'll stick with that because I seem to have no trouble talking. Don't know what that's all about. Thanks for watching, guys. Catch you in the next video. Bye for now.